You rock out on those drums, man! You rock out! <laughs> I like how everyone else is like completely dumper- Well, no, he's still- he's still going. And he's still going. Uh, I guess- I guess they're just very dedicated to their music. <laughs> but he's the most obvious one, and I just noticed that his- his drum set is a bunch of pufferfish. Is that abuse? That's totally abuse. Oh, and that's so cool. His symbols are like are are like scallops, seashells. That's so cool. <laughs> anyway, hey guys, Miss Ellie here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Admire the Indiegogos. No, it's another episode of Majora's Mask 3D. In the last episode, we finished up the Great Bay Temple, and we got to hear really awesome music from the Indiegogos. And in this episode, we're going to be tack tackling a couple of side things before we start heading out to big and important things. We need a rest after that dungeon. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? I think... If we start from here, I can I can make it over there, right? I think I can. Uh, we're gonna equip this. Take this off. And let's go! Well, first things first, we need to go and see the Great Fairy because we did get all of the stray fairies in the Great Bay Temple. And it's gonna be right over here eventually. It's that... That cave entrance over there. I totally missed that. Uh, okay. But yeah, we've been doing we've been doing dungeon stuff for the past little while, so it's about time that we tackle a couple of a couple of side things, you know. Prepare ourselves for the road of road ahead. Uh okay, well, let's flip on up here. Alright. Gotta have that pizzazz. Um, okay, there's a couple of boulders. I have a mass amount of bombs. So let's let's use that up. Go! I need the other one blown up. Don't don't question me. I just need them both blown up. There. There we go. That looks better. I need a grand entrance in. Don't you know? <laughs> Alright, step on forward, and we know the drill. Let's release the fairies. Courageous young one, I am the great fairy of courage. Thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. As thanks, I shall lend you my strength. Your defense has been strengthened! Enemies now do half as much damage as before. You thought we were tanky before? Oh boy, that just got twice as good! You found all the stray fairies in Great Bay Temple and revived the Great Fairy of Courage as thanks she doubled your defense. Come see me whenever you are overcome by weariness. Yes! You see that white border around our, around our hearts? That means each one is essentially worth double. So right now, compared to, what, like 10 seconds ago, we're packing like... Like, how many, how many hearts would that be? Like 26 hearts, technically? I mean, it, it is extreme technicality, but... Theoretically, if you looked at it in the way of like, how many hearts we would have, or how many hits we can take, it is essentially that many hearts, which is wild to me. We, it's not like we were hurting for health before, but now it's just ridiculous. <laughs> um, I will say one thing about that, though, is that I'm, I'm a little confused that she says that she's the Great Fairy of Strength, but she ups our defense? Uh, no, no, she says, I'll lend you my strength. She's the Great Fairy of Courage, and she ups our defense. 
That seems a little bit all over the place, but whatever floats your boat, lady. I'm not gonna complain about more hearts. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we have the regular old Termina Field theme in this area now, so... We can hop in the water and go, and I'm surprised that we still have like likes out, by the way. I figured with, you know, the whole cleansing the ocean thing and making everything good that the like likes would be a thing of the past, or maybe they're just indigenous. They're 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 kinda they're kinda buttholes though, because they keep stealing or trying to steal our stuff. But still. I don't know. Uh, I, I I kinda figured that big baddies like this would be would be gone by now. Well, I'm going to go onto this abandoned ship. This was not here before, the Fisherman's Jumping Game. Please ride the boat to the Fisherman's Island to inquire about, about, about Bled playing. So he's all the way over there. We gotta, we gotta take this slow boat. It has to go in a circle around it. It can't, it can't just, Swim right on up to that, up to that tree. Oh no, it can't. The <laughs> swim. Do boats swim? Uh, boats don't exactly swim, but it's floating. It's floating. Eventually, one of these days. Yep. Here we go. Done. So this is a mini game, and he's outside. And wow, I never realized how big he actually is. This guy's freaking huge. Now that the seas are back to normal, I've started a little business aimed at tourists. You didn't choose a very accessible place, man. <laughs> if you pay 20 rupees, I'll show you a jumping game that is a really big prize. If you're up for it, go to the island in the center. All right. So the aim of the game. Oh, he's gonna explain it anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna light the torches on each of the surrounding four islands in a particular order. Jump to the island that has the lit torch. If you can jump to it before the torch goes out, you'll get one point. Uh, so we need to shoot for 20 points. 20 or more. It's not a terribly difficult game. If you land in the water, you automatically lose. So be careful. Oh, uh, wait! Well, that, that sucked. Okay, I think I need to adjust my camera. There we go. Uh, once again, taking advantage of the L target thing, resetting the camera. Because if you touch the C stick here as well, then it's going to assume that you want to control the camera the entire time. It's the same deal as the beaver race, so hitting L will reset it, and this is much easier than trying to adjust it yourself. Um, if you have a hard time with this, I would assume that's- uh, No! Well, I thought I was good at this. What happened? No, it's not harder than it seems. I've done this before, man! I just screwed up. That shouldn't have counted. It was a practice run. <laughs> yeah, 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 I didn't- I didn't jump at the chance. Ha 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 ha, game, you're not funny. Uh, oh, we only added his his journal entry now? Really? Uh, once the ocean is back to normal, his place will open for business. Uh, all right, okay, let's try this again, please. One, two, there we go, yes. Bloody, bloody, blah. 17. 18. Whoops, that's the wrong one. 19. And 20! We have already won! I could just sit on my butt if I wanted to at this point, but I want to see how high I can get. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, if you have a hard time distinguishing the fire, it can be a little bit easier when it gets dark. I think you can play this game when it gets- when it gets darker. I believe you can, at least in kind of like the midday when the sun starts going down, because then the- the glow of the fire is a little bit more visible. But honestly, it's not difficult. This is not a difficult game. Like I said, I could just be sitting on my butt right now waiting waiting for it to end, and I'd still win. But me being me, I need to put my best into everything. You know how that goes. I need to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can possibly do. I gotta impress the fishermen, you know? I can't just go for bare minimum. 
I think on really good on really good runs, you can get upwards of like 50 or 60. I know I've gotten 50 something before. Okay, well we're done. Uh oh, that was a little too easy. Well, here's your prize. Clearly not balanced for <laughs> for heroes in training slash heroes in general because Link is kind of a hero. <laughs> Here we go! Piece of heart! And wow! We have a new heart container! With that we have 14! I was thinking of saving up to buy a big ship. Now it looks like I may go bankrupt. Ah, that's on you, man! You you designed the game, you gotta live up to your decisions. You know? You know? Alright, well, the next place that I want to go to is actually Clock Town. Uh, some of you probably can guess what I want to do right now. I wonder if you can. Can you guess? Can you guess? Here we are at Clock Town, and the thing that I want to do is... Well, it does have something to do with what we did in the Great Bay Temple. Over here in the laundry pool, we had a little creature over there that we kind of glossed by. We, we, I think we did acknowledge ex its existence, but I haven't really stopped to check it out. This is one of the frogs that we need. So we're gonna pop on... Which one should I get rid of? This one. We're gonna pop on our Don Ghetto mask and see what he wants. Ah, oh, Don Ghetto, it has been so long. What has brought you all this way? Could it be you came all this way looking for me? Ah, oh, you need not say to a uh, set a thing. Say a thing. Upon seeing that face, I understand. I see, but I had heard it, that it was still winter in the mountains. When spring comes, I shall definitely go to the mountains. So let us meet again. And that makes two frogs out of five, four, five. I think it's five. Well, we'll see. I'm not really thinking right now, but I do know where the next one is. If I can play the song right. <laughs> and the next one that we need to go and get is over here in the Southern Swamp. We don't have to do anything crazy fancy for this one. We just need to head over this way into the next map. It's not where the poison is, so it's not terribly out of the way. Oh, by the way, this is kind of funny. Oh, Sora Link is walking. Wait, what? There we go, look, look. <laughs> he can just walk through. It's just up to his chest. Wait, I'm curious if I can actually swim through here though, because he, he was swimming. He was swimming, look at, look at him swim. Oh man, oh man, look at this. I can speed right on through. Okay, well this is a thing that you can do. But as, as soon as soon as you hit B, then it makes him not not swim anymore. Wow, that's one way to do it. Yeah, we totally can't swim if we if we dive down. Well, there you go. Pro tip. Uh, now I need to talk to you. I like this one. This one's blue. I like this one. It's so cute. Uh, Don Ghetto, it has been so long. What has brought you all this way? Could it be you came all this way looking for me? Ah, uh, you need not say a thing. Etc. 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 Yes. Third frog. Hmm. Moving right along then. Uh, the next frog is in a similar location, but not quite. It is in this general area of the game, but this time we're heading to Woodfall, specifically the temple. Wow, that animation is shortened too. Okay, well, I went through the trouble of, of rising up this this temple off screen, kind of, but I realized that the animation was shortened, so I was like, oh wow, that's kind of interesting. Uh, similarly to the other temple, we get a little scene. Ye who have challenged my mighty blade, courageous traveler of time and of space. If thou art fearless, stand before me that I might witness thy power once more. Yeah, we 
can just go straight to Odolo if you want. <laughs> like I said, every every temple will be able to do that. Like you go in and it'll be like, oh yes, you cr courageous child, you can do the things and collect this fairy and fight the temple boss if you want. It's just a convenient thing if you need to make things changed or fix the area for any specific side quests. But we've already done this temple before, so I will just speed things along so that you guys can see exactly where the frog is. this mask on talk to you ah oh, don ghetto it has been so long what has brought you all this way bloody bloody blah, blah, blah i've heard this before <laughs> and we've used don ghetto's mask to recruit the frog in woodfall now well we don't need anything else here we obviously don't need the boss key uh okay well we're we're just gonna take off and the next place that we want to go to is Snowhead. So I'll see you guys there. Here we are, and just like before when we did some side questy things that involved the mountain, we need to defeat Go uh, Goat once. I, I keep wanting to call him Got. <laughs> I always want to call him Got, and I'm not sure why, but we do have to beat Goat one more time so, since we have to do that, I'm gonna spare you guys the boss fight and just take care of it myself. And here they are! They're so cute! Look at all of them! I have been waiting for you, Don Gero! They're so cute! I love frogs. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, but it looks like you've lost a little weight. As you can see, Don Gero, the long winter has ended and spring has finally come to these mountains. Let us begin our chorus. <laughs> This is how we how this is how deeply we were moved by your spectacular conducting. They gave me their hearts. Oh, oh, I love this. I love this so much. Let us do it again sometime. Yes. Yes, I will come back on my own time just to see you cuties. Oh my goodness. Well, actually that would take a lot of work because there's five of them and a couple of them are in dungeons. So never mind. I'm never seeing you guys again. You, conduct you conducted the frog choir wearing Don Ghetto's mask. In exchange, you got your very own piece of heart. By the way, speaking of the Don Ghetto's mask, where the frick did that Goron actually get this mask? Uh, this, like, we got this mask from that one Goron. Why did he have it? I really wonder that. Like, uh, apparently, Don Ghetto is some highly regarded frog god or whatever. So, like, seriously, how did he get it? That's so weird to me. <laughs> well, now that we're here in Clock Town, we do have one more thing to wrap up this cycle. Look at that sky. That's such a cool sky. It's so neat. Oh, that red. It's so creepy. Clearly, the end of the world is nigh. Well, let's head down here, and the place that we want to go is the curiosity shop. And I'm too poor, so hang on, let me go buy some, uh, not buy some stuff, but, uh, harass the banker. <laughs> Wait, did we get this block of text before? I don't think we did. That's funny, look little guy, if it's because of the bad rumors going around, forget it, they're just rumors. Um, wow, that, that's kind of, that's kind of a weird block of text okay it caught me off guard when I was when I was withdrawing all these rupees well we certainly don't have many rupees to go around anymore it's lowering by the day 
Uh, wow, that's an obnoxious sound effect. Okay. 500 rupees. We are getting something very specific, and yes, we did need the giant wallet for this. Otherwise, we'd only be able to carry 200, and we wouldn't be able to do this at all. So 500 is exactly what we need, and it needs to be 10 p.m., so hang on a bit. Okay, let's go on in and claim our prize. Hello! Hello, you are a shady person. Welcome. You gotta look around while I'm doing a special sale. Check it out. Tonight's bargain is the all-night mask for use at bedtime. Uh, I don't think that looks like a bedtime mask. I forget when this was made, but it sure is a freaky mask, see? When you put it on, you can try to... You can try and... Try and try to fall asleep, bleh, but you won't be able to. Pretty creepy, huh? Well, let's check out that bargain. Yeah, it's horrifying. This is one of the creepiest masks. You got the all-night mask. Apparently, this mask won't let you drift off to sleep even if you want to. Ah, it was a tad pricey. That's an understatement, but it's still a great find. Um, I will mention that the reason why we are able to buy this is because we stopped the old lady from getting those bomb, uh, the bombs to the shop. Or, well, no. Wait. Uh, we stopped Sacken from stealing the bombs. Blood. It, had, it really didn't have anything to do with the old lady. Um, if Sacken got the bombs to the shop, then we would be seeing a bomb bag here instead. So... Yeah, make sure make sure you blow him up before you try to get the all night mask. No, I have to say the all night mask is easily one of the creepiest masks. Like not even just in design, but also by concept. Uh the all night mask, a mask that stops you from falling asleep even if you badly want to. They say it was made for torture. That description is also confirmed by a gossip stone somewhere. I don't know where the gossip stone is, but it it describes it as a torture device of insomnia, which is creepy as heck. Can you imagine that? Like, wanting to go to sleep so bad, but you can't for days and days and days. Like, that, that, that creeps me out for some reason. Look, look, look at that smile, too. It has a little smile etched into it. That, I don't call that little, to be fair. But it's still creepy as heck. Well, with our prize in hand, that opens up something that I do want to do in the next episode. But before we wrap things up, there's one more thing that I want to look at. This isn't anything required. It's not a it's not a part of a side quest or anything like that. It's just something that I remember seeing and I really really love this. It's kind of it's interesting and sad. We're here at the milk bar. There's not really anyone here. We've seen this 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 atmosphere before. Uh I do believe it has to be like a certain time before before you get this block of text, but for one, if you stay here long enough and just kind of stand around, I hope it'll do it. I've seen it happen before. Huh. It's actually not happening. That's kind of weird. Okay, what I was waiting for is that one time I came over here just to kind of test things out and make sure that make sure that things would happen, and I, I idled right in this spot, and Madame Aroma initiated a conversation with me. It was... It was interesting because it was her standard text but i could walk around with it on the screen and but she it looked like she was talking to me it was it was really strange and i thought oh wow that's so cool she'll actually go out of her way to to comfort you and it's not something that that you yourself have to initiate but i guess maybe it was a glitch maybe huh that's interesting well it's a possibility. I, I'm not gonna stand here forever and wait for her to talk to me. That that kind of sounds a little bit sad. <laughs> but the main thing that I wanted to come down here and see is Mr. Barton's block of text. Welcome. As you can see, all of our customers have taken refuge. 
It may be my undoing, but I'm the sort of fellow who'll stay at his business through thick and thin. And so I continue standing here at the counter, hoping one of my dear customers will be crazy enough to come in and wait it out with me. And I wasn't wrong. See? You stopped in. <laughs> oh, my heart. My heart. That I When I saw that for the first time, my heart just wrenched. I saw that, I actually saw that while I was testing things for videos, and I was like, oh wow, like, I wonder if he says anything when the moon is falling, and I saw that, and I was just like, oh, I wasn't expecting this gut punch right now. Um, I, I did try to get, get that, get that conversation earlier in the series, but for some reason it wasn't working. I think it has to be late enough in the day, but it's just one of those heartwarming and heart-wrenching touches that, that just wrenches me from the inside. Oh, it's so sad. Th this is another one of those things where I will definitely say that the world of Termina just feels so alive. Everyone has their own attitude, their own goals, their own their own thoughts about the world the world ending and their own individual reactions to it. Him, he's like super calm about it. He's like he he's at his station still working and he, he's sticking through it. Yet everything's going to die. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, another one that does happen is that if you talk to the guard he says if you believe that the moon is truly if you believe that the moon truly is falling you'd best leave town immediately those who remain in town either don't believe the rumors or have given up all hope it pains my heart to see children still playing in the streets because they have no idea what's going on <sighs> This game knows how, how how to wrench the heart. Well, I just wanted to show those off very briefly while we were still pretty close to the end. I think we're going to end on that note and start time over so that in the next episode, we can start our new day.